Van Baal off to Jumbo Visma, winner of Paris-Roubaix this year. Are you surprised to see him, 30 years old, not a regular winner, off to Jumbo Visma, who already have pretty stark classic score? But this show, as always, is brought to you by Zwift. Zwift Academy is back for 2022. Registration is open now. Whether you're aiming for a pro contract like Jay Vine or Neve Branfrey or just looking to kickstart your fitness with some structured sessions, Zwift Academy will help you get fitter and have more fun on the bike. There are six workouts to complete, either solo or in-group workouts with baseline rides to compare your progress before and after Zwift Academy. If we look at the dynamics of the cobble squad of Jumbo Visma this year, it was already a very strong squad with Laporte, with Van Aert, obviously. Let's not forget about Wout Van Aert in this cobble squad. If you add Van Bala to that, I would argue that the chances of all three to win a race increase. And you would say, well, how is that possible? How is Van Bala going to that team, increasing his chances of winning when he might not even be leader? I'd expect them to be three co-leaders on the Cobble squad. And perhaps Laporte might be taking a, a bit of a, a bad step there. Like if Van Barla goes to the team with Van Aert, I think Laporte is the one that takes the biggest hit. Or am I wrong in that? Van Baal can't sprint, so Laporte can sprint. Mm. So Laporte, you can be happier going in a smaller group. Uh, Van Baal needs to go solo like he did in Roubaix. He, I mean, his season, second in Flanders, first at Roubaix, good probably domestique in Amstel, which Ineos also won with Fiatkovsky, eighth in E3, which Jumbo dominated. He, We haven't mentioned him as a stage racing domestique, Benji. Uh, he did the Tour de Suisse, Tour de France, and he's doing the Vuelta this year. He's, had a, he's been a busy boy. Um <laughs> I see more for their classics team. I think because when I think of their uh, Tour de France squad, we both think Roglic and Jonas should rinse and repeat. I almost wouldn't change the team from this year. It depends on the parkour, obviously. But like, yeah. I would rather have Van Baal focus on the best classic season, which Jumbo Visma didn't win a monument in spring this year. It was the missing piece of their season. Focus on classics in spring. And Benote, like, Benote was really good. <laughs> really, really good in the Tour de France. Now, Van Baal has probably done in his career in 2018 yeah. some better climbing performances, but Benote was really good. I would rather he focus on, as you said, the classics. And yeah, like, Paris Bay is a great example. Someone to make sure, I mean, Wout Van Aert needs to learn a little bit, perhaps, to ride with someone like Van Baal. He doesn't need to close attacks. He doesn't need to push on the front. Let Van Baal initiate things as well. But yeah, he's Dutch. He's 30. He's still in his prime. <laughs> he's got good years. And like, it makes sense from a marketing perspective. Um, what do you yes. expect? Like, do you think he will be sacrificing opportunities? Or do you think they will go with like the multi leader stuff, even in the classics? I believe they should go for multi leader strategies in the classics. I think that's what works a lot of the time when it comes to quick step in the past and the stronger quick step became the more dominant they were because they were strong in the whiff and if one rider one leader has a bad day if one leader crashes into a ditch like Laporte in RVV you've got an extra leader next to that that can pick up the pieces where they are left off with and there's also the aspect of strategy in those races Van Baal is indeed the rider that goes relatively early in races and tries to benefit from group dynamics and we saw that in Roubaix, like you mentioned, he attacked away in a situation where Van der Poel and Van Aert were in the same group. And I think it was also when Van Aert had punctures and so forth. But basically, Van der Poel and Van Aert had to respond to every attack that happened in those groups. And certainly, they look at each other to close a, a gap. And now with Van Aert being in that group, Van Bala could either attack if a rider, a stronger sprinter is still in the group there. Like a Peterson, for example, if Peterson is in the group with Van Aert, in that situation, Van Bala can try and attack away while Van Aert is a second option, the sprinting option, while they put Peterson under pressure at the end of a Roubaix, for example. That's the situations I've got in my head there. And I think that benefits every single rider from that. There's also the factor to it. Like you spoke about the, G, uh, the Grand Tour 
schedule for Van Bale. Is there an effect? This is a conspiracy theory by Benji Nassen written right now. Do you think there is a possibility that Jumbo Visma is also thinking if we get Van Bale to our team, he's very strong in the Cobble class, he strengthens us there, he's an option to become a Dennis-like character in a Grand Tour, to be that domestique that Dennis couldn't be this year because he was injured, basically, or ill before the Tour de France. But they're also taking away strength from Ineos. I Is there a possibility? Important. Okay. Ineos, apart from Pidcock, we will remain to be seeing what he does in the Classics next year, breakout Classics season last year. Ineos relied in Rabanza Pale, in Paru Bay, in Amstel Gold Race. They relied on multi-leaders. Uh, it was Pidcock and Fiato more so in Amstel. Paru Bay was Turner and Van Baal, right, in that last group. Mm-hmm. And they used their whole – and so this is their their strongest Classics rider in, across all the Classics, Van Baal. Sheffield is coming. Yeah, he's coming, but like Fred Wright came 10th in RVV. No one – Ever oh top ten people forget that like is can we pencil in Sheffield for fifth at RVV next year maybe yes but I'm calling okay. it. <laughs> you're penciling it in but Van Baal <laughs> literally came second this year now that was because Pagacha kind of messed up the finish but when you think about now the teams in those spring classics is Alaphilippe going to focus on them as much next year or is he going to focus on his Arden? Because his Arden wasn't as good this year. And then that means it's right now for Quick Step, if if Remco's not doing the Cobble Classics, it's all on Asgren. So that's yeah. one leader. And then right. UAE is all Pog. And then Ineos is a lot on Pidcock. And then Yumbo are coming with Laporte. Tratnik, maybe. Is that confirmed? I think it Rumored was. Rumored by Vila Flitz, probably. Yeah, exactly. Um, who also came top 10 RVE, Van Baal and Van Aert. That's a multi-headed monster against these teams with single leaders. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, certainly a problem in that effect. And the thing is with Quickstep as well, we don't know how strong they're going to be next year compared to this year with all the stuff they had going on, like you mentioned. I don't think we can blame Alaphilippe having a weaker LBL by ending up in the ditch by the side of the road and yeah, being injured. Yeah, true. No, no, but I mean, that yeah. that disappointment will mean he's like, I've got to focus on our Yeah, he was supposed to win it until he put his hands in the air too early. But yeah, I think I think weakening competitors and then the marketing benefit. And it's the same thing with the Carapaz move. Ineos are like, all right, we got Sheffield, Pidcock, Clock, got all these guys wanting leadership next year. Should we match Van Baal? Is that the best use of our money? Eh. Maybe not. That's probably, and he probably wants to go to a Dutch team, or maybe he doesn't. I don't know. But 